Well, hello, everybody. It is a good time tonight. Joined by Andrew and Tom. We have a fun old elk single barrel selection tonight, which I'm pretty pumped about. Oh, and we actually have some people hanging out. We got a couple of people hanging out in the chat as well. So Monday night, this is ahead of the standard Tuesday stream. But tonight we are here to talk about uh, old elk, which I'm pretty pumped about. So welcome, Andrew. Welcome, Tom. How are you guys doing? Yeah, doing well, Jay. Thanks for having us. Absolutely. Doing good. Excellent. Great. Well, without any further ado, um, delay some background we have for the folks watching at home. Uh, six Old Elk samples, which is pretty cool. Old Elk is out of Colorado. They are probably the only place where Greg Metzi distilled at MGP, left MGP, and then joined a new company and then bottled his own distillate. I think five to six years later is pretty much the age statement to running with now, which I think is pretty cool. So um, pretty well-priced. These are probably going to retail at about the $75 mark, if I had to guess. But uh, we have the straight bourbon whiskey and the weeded bourbon here as well. We'll be doing, uh, we'll be talking about some rye and some just pure wheat whiskey a little bit later this year. But uh, yeah, six samples, all cast strength, all five year, five year on the weeded bourbon. Oh no, five and six year on the weeded bourbon and all six year on the straight bourbon as well. So uh, I figure I have your guys' notes, I have your guys' rankings, but. Um, and there's some contention. So John also tasted off camera. John is usually my producer on Tuesdays. Um, he's the other half of weekly whiskey, but because John has a life and had plans, I'm running the solo tonight. So our, uh, I'll reveal my rankings in a minute, but if I'm not mistaken, Andrew, do you have your notes handy or do you want me to read them off for you? Yeah, I got them. And, and the more detailed ones too, <laughs> I didn't want to send you the whole dissertation. It's all good. Um, yeah, so I definitely run more towards the weeds as far as Old Elk and MGP. I'm just an absolute sucker for MGP weeded. So mm -hmm. uh, when I heard we were tasting the weeded alongside yeah. the, uh, I'm guessing low rye. I'm not sure what the what the straight bourbon is. I would imagine it's probably that 21%. Yeah. Um, so for me, I, I mean, I'll, I'll just jump into my overall ranking. So the the 598 took it for me and and. Uh, you know, I'll just go, go down the line. So lots of like red berries and oat and honey and stuff on the nose. Um, some like roasted walnut, even like a little bit of like savory notes, almost like, uh, like a savory kind of paprika. Sure. I felt like I got, which was pretty wild. Um, definitely had a, a thicker mouthfeel, which I really enjoy. And the, I wrote down cocoa infused caramel. I, it, it all was just kind of. <laughs> it's just kind of coming to me um, on the, this one, 598, the weeded. Um, and then on the finish, it was just super long, and I got, like, just a bunch of dark maple syrup. It, it just, for me, it was the top of the top. Okay. It's interesting. Well, I'm. It this this doesn't usually happen. And for people watching at home, um, I sent the samples, and USPS did something that we never expected them to do, which was deliver them several days late. So we've we've all tasted ahead of this tasting, and I think uh, do you guys have all six samples in front of you? Um, yeah. Okay, maybe we might tie break at this off. So I, I did a couple tastings, and I found them to be pretty different each time. Um, well, I'm trying to think of the best way to like piggyback. So your number one was actually Tom's number four, um, and this yeah. this this goes on all night long. Um, this is kind of the fun. <laughs> um, so what I'm kind of thinking, you guys really liked. Uh, 1508 placed in your top three, uh, 1223 topped in your top three. I know your uh, 1448 was was kind of your like break even there, Andrew. Looking at your notes here, um, which placed dead last for Tom, um, which is funny because co-host John ranked at number one. Wow. So like we're in all sorts of fun stuff here, but uh, um, yeah. So maybe uh, maybe we'll do another. We'll do some light tasting tonight. I think we'll kind of work out. I think that twelve twenty three, and that uh, fifteen oh eight, or what I have poured here, since those ranked top in your two. But um, Tom, what did you think of twelve twenty three? Twelve twenty three. So this was also one of those weeders. Yep. Um, notes I took down were really nice, light brown sugar, and I even got kind of a a confectioner sugar on the nose. Mm -hmm. um, so just really. Uh, encompass that what you're wanting from a uh, from a weeder. Uh, when I kind of dug in again, 
uh, lots of caramel coming through. And then I got some really light fruit to get like a, a lychee note, which is weird. I get this in, in uh, a few MG, MGP products, but I got a lychee or, or some pomegranate. Okay. Um, and then on the taste, I didn't, you know, it's a weeder. It wasn't super, super complex, but it was exactly what I want from a weeder. Okay. Um, super sweet, super sweet caramel. Um, and then that, that light sweetness just kind of rides through to the end. Uh, I got a little bit of oak at the end, and a little bit of uh, kind of that alcohol strategy in the end. But overall, it was, yeah, 12, 23 was my number two. So Okay. And this was uh, this was your number three. What did you think of this, Andrew? And I'll lay down some notes. So 1223, um, yeah, it was um, in definitely in my top three. I, I selfishly included two weeders in my top three. Um, 1223 took me a little while to kind of come around on. So initially, um, you know, it was a little bit of a tricky nose, but as you begin to kind of get through the ethanol a little bit, I definitely was getting like a faint raspberry. I even got like... Um, you know, like Whoppers, the Whoppers candy, like the malted milk ball. So I started getting that kind of like multi sweetness almost. Sure. Um, and uh, yeah, I wrote in here too. I, I got like little bits of leather. Um, and actually, I'm like super into colognes, which is like totally random. But yeah. there's a <laughs> there's a cologne I love uh, by Tom Ford, which is called uh, Tuscan Leather. And it's basically just you take a raspberry and you take some leather notes and you mash them together. And it's, it creates this like rich kind of supple leather kind of scent so i was almost getting little hints and reminders of that too um on the nose um and then like butterscotch werther's original type on the the palette um and again another rich creamy finish um i had teddy grams on the finish so like definitely mm -hmm. that um bready kind of gram sweet honey note all, all kind of coming in on the finish so yeah i really enjoyed it interesting it's the uh I think it was this one here. I got like a, a faint fruit note, which I actually enjoyed because like sometimes fruit comes through in the weeders as like a cinnamon note that I don't really like. But this almost reminded me of like a, it was very like a tobacco, but almost like a little spot of cantaloupe, which or like honeydew, like that kind of that melon to it. Yeah. I feel like I, I get so predominantly melons with MGP. This yeah. Bit. And more and more lately, I think it's really interesting to watch the profiles of all these places shift, you know, I probably couldn't pick it out year over year, like quarter after quarter, but like I have MGP. That's the same age improved from five years ago. That tastes very different. And you know, there's a million, a million variables that could go into it. But I think it's interesting that people complain like, you know, these factories make gigantic amounts of whiskey. It's not that special and unique, but if five years later, it's very different. I think that's kind of telling. So this gets even more fun. Um, Co-host John, who's not on, um, ranked 518 extremely high, which, if I'm not mistaken, you ranked number one, Tom. I did. Um, and Andrew ranked number five. So um, I'll get to tasting that one here in a second. But I think we're going to end up in kind of a – I did a stream with Michael Myers of 291, and he, he – made a cocktail called the Mexican standoff. And I feel like that's, that's right about where we might end up. Um, the good part is we don't have to pick just one. I think we're probably going to take two barrels from this, two of the six and then we'll come back around. So, um, that's the nice part. Usually like lately we've only been getting enough samples for one or two people, which is like really easy to pick on. We even had three for barrel, but having four, four data points is always great. So it's always nice to see a little bit of, of tangling on on the number ones but let's see so we covered 1223 1508 i am curious what did you not like about 518 andrew as i reach for the unmute button here um for me i think uh so 518 um this was the only one of our samples that was above 60 if i'm not mistaken yeah, five um, when it was a hop. Um, yeah, sixty point seven five. Um, and I just felt the the proof itself was a little too prominent. Sure. Going back to back, I'm switching, you know, back and forth between the different weeds as I'm tasting, and it just to me, it just um, I don't know, it took away from the experience a little bit. Um, 
I, I certainly never shy away from the high proofs and, you know, I, I, I didn't want to succumb to this. So we'll all just chase the 60% because it's higher. And I, I really wanted to, um, sure. Feel like I could pick out, you know, the, the, the flavors. Um, and I, I, I just didn't get as much from five, one, eight as the other two. Is okay. What it came down to. Okay. Um, no, that's totally fair. I mean, 60, I mean, it's funny sometimes when people are like, oh, it's only 120 proof. And I'm like, you still know that's 60% EVP, right? Like that is not, like people are complaining about the new Elijah Craig barrel proof. That's only, what is it? 129.2 proof. Like, like, okay. So it's just a hair under 60% ABV. Like that is plenty of ethanol. Like there's going to be enough booze in there. Um, what'd you like about five, um, one, eight, Tom? All right. <clears throat> this one had probably the, the weirdest tasting note in it that I've ever really. Written. Yeah. Um, so I, I loved the nose on this one. Okay. Um, super dark caramel on it, which is not, you know, necessarily what I got of the other weeders here. Um, and then I got like a little bit of a funk, mm -hmm. um, which I, I, I hadn't recognized any other samples necessarily. Um, it's almost like, I don't know, wild turkey kind of has a funk and this is similar to that, I guess, in a way. Sure. Um, but then, yeah, here we go. Weird, weird tasting note alert. Um, it's like a, I don't know what it was. Maybe it was that I went there earlier in the day when I tasted it, but I got like this Home Depot smell. Okay. Um, I didn't know whether it was like the fresh cut lumber or something, but like that hardware store yeah. smell came through in this. I, I, I don't know where it's coming from exactly, but uh, I really liked it. I kind of like finding the, the weird and funky stuff a little bit um, in some of these. Um, so I, I, I really enjoyed that. And then uh, on the taste, um, super sweet up front. So kind of that classic weeder. Um, and then this one gets pretty heavy, uh, pretty heavy on the, on the palate. Um, just kind of sat on my tongue for a little bit. I didn't know whether this would be a, a Kentucky hug or a Colorado hug on, on this one, but it, it does kind of <laughs> get you up at the end. Yeah, I, I love that descriptor, that Home Depot note. Yeah, like I can smell it too. It's funny because like I'm a new homeowner, so I've been at Home Depot every week for like the last four months. Um, like because everything's broken and needs buying all the time. But yeah, like it totally has its like it totally has that note to it. Kind of that not like plaster, but it it's like wood and soil, and there's a little bit of like dust and um not like deep tobacco y stuff, but like I I can very vibrantly get that almost must to it that yeah. Um, oh, that's going to totally change the way I shop at Home Depot this weekend. <laughs> I love it. I need to buy, I need to buy a chainsaw. I can't wait to be back. <laughs> I, oh, that's great. I do love the 518 though. I do agree. It is a little bit hot coming in at that 60.75. Um, it has so much like, uh, it reminds me when you go to like the carnival and they have like the the pecan or the pralines or whatever and they're like roasting and like brown sugar those kind of desserty notes that i always enjoy but it doesn't have any cinnamon which is weird for me from a weeded bourbon because like weeded bourbons especially like weller yeah. are very cinnamony for me um and this isn't isn't so much like that that's nice and it is six years it it almost tastes a little bit older due to that, like kind of that oaky, woody, woody chippiness. Um, that's not like, not like craft whiskey wood chips, but like there's definitely oak here, which I didn't get a lot in the others. Like the others were more like fruity, lively. Um, this is definitely, I think, very kind of oak forward. Yeah, this was definitely, this was far and away my favorite one of the six that we tried. Okay, okay. That's good to know. I really like this one. This was also a top contender for John um, of the Weeded. This is good stuff. So let's see. Um, I'm looking at my shit. We've talked about 1508, 1223. Oh, so these these were actually your top three, the 1508, 1223, and 518. Okay. That's great. I'm still like kind of at war with myself because I've gone back and forth. I really um, – I did actually like the 1447, but I didn't like it as much as like the 518 – I didn't like it as much as what was the other one? It was 1508, I think. Yeah. Um, I jumbled up all my samples like an idiot. Um, but I like the 1508 too. So I think the only one that like everybody kind of hated at the same time 
Well, it was it was your number four. Fourteen forty eight was my last. It was Tom's last, and it was John's last, and it was your number four, Andrew. Um, which surprises me because usually people always disagree on the least favorite sample, whether it's like two things or twenty things. But overall, uh, how much have you had? Much old elk, Tom? Did it, like if if you talk about what part of the country and do you guys have old elk out the wazoo, or is it pretty hard to find where you are? No, it's pretty easy. I'm in Chicago area, so we're we're pretty well stocked on on most things. Um, I have not had a ton of old elk though. I I considered going out and buying one before we did this tasting just to kind of give it a try. Um, I did not. I didn't end up doing so, but I'm I'm glad. I kind of went in completely blind on it, so it was it was good though. Um, I, it opened my eyes for sure to a uh, to a brand I haven't necessarily tried before. Okay, cool. I'm. I'm the same way. Like it's always nice to have background, but it is kind of fun to do it like completely blind and have no idea. We we're expecting up in Wisconsin where I am. There's, I think we might get two of the regular skews. I haven't seen a single barrel in Wisconsin yet. So um, I know Andrew, you mentioned you picked up a couple. Are those local to you, or are you kind of trying to dig those out from from the woodwork and friends from a ways? Yeah. So the moment I heard that um, Justin's House of Bourbon that pick was coming out. It was a five year MGP weeded. I was like, I, it was actually my first foray into MGP weeders. Okay. Cause I, I live in Delaware and I can't get jack shit. Here, quite That's honestly. right. Okay. So, um, I was able to score a couple of bottles from uh, J hop's website and then seal box announced their pick. So um, I picked that up as well. And then the third pick that I have um, I had to buy on secondary, which is just an unfortunate reality for where I am is, um, I'm bordered between New Jersey, which um, is very heavily picked over all the time. <laughs> Maryland, which the the eastern part of Maryland doesn't get too too much. Okay. Um, and then Pennsylvania, which is a control state. So. Yeah, you're in a there. tough spot there. <laughs> okay. Cool. Yeah, I'm always curious because like people talk about MGP and then like, oh, but Greg left. But like, obviously, an old. Elk's case, that's where Greg left too. So I, I think that, you know, people are kind of tired of MGP sometimes, but also like this is the guy that made like MGP and he's doing it once more. So I'm, I'm kind of curious because they are like pretty new. I think maybe the last year is when they like really kind of picked up um, fleshing out the portfolio and getting like selections out there and stuff like that. But yeah. I think the last time I, the the only time, other time I've had them was at Whiskey Fest. It's probably like three or four years ago now. Okay. Um, and at that point, like, you know, you your palate is destroyed after after going to the patty <laughs> table a couple of times. So <laughs> that, I remember it very well. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. I kind of miss it. But at the same time, I don't miss like tasting nothing but, but like wheat and grains for like 72 hours after a whiskey <laughs> festival. Um, yeah, that's a lot of whiskey. Cool. So going through, I really, I really like this 518. I think that, um, I think so. We'll definitely take two barrels. So, um, not to steamroll over Andrew here. Uh, we have three really high marks on the 518, man. I can't get away from it. I don't know if you are picking up anything different or if you're steadfast in your opinion, which is completely fine. I could just be my palate tonight. I'm, I'm, I'm not getting, again, that that kind of fullness and richness I was getting on a couple of the others. Sure. So, okay. Yeah. For me, it was it was mostly about a concentration of flavor. So. Okay. No, that's fair. I think uh, I might now that once we do the tasting, I might experiment with this in some cocktails, which is something I don't usually do. But I feel like this would be punchy, kind of punchy and fun. Let's see. Yeah, in 1447, this was unfortunately John, one of John's picks, but all three of us agreed that it's in our bottom, which like, I don't know. It felt surprisingly for being 5% lower, it drank hotter to me than the 518. Um, and I know that they're a different mash bill, but like 6% ABV is, is a pretty big jump. So I think, uh, let's see. We're kind of in a duel, so this is where things are going to work out. Whether we take our second to be 1223, which was your third, Andrew, but your second, Tom, um, or if we take 
1508, which was your second Andrew and your third Tom. Um, and John, John placed these both about the same and I really like both of them. So I'm kind of, I'm kind of tough here. Um, whether we take a, this one, I think I like almost as much as 518. So I'd probably put it in that second slot, but I'm open to tasting and figuring out which of the two we take. Um, Cause it has been, I think that was the very first one I tasted. So it's been a while since I, uh, sorry, the 1508, but it's tough because yeah, I mean, these kind of different, but kind of the same. Good. Yeah. I was going to say, I mean, from a diversity standpoint, grabbing a, a, a rye, rye flavoring grain and a wheat flavoring grain would be nice. Um, what you get with the 1508 and the 1518 or the 518, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, that was kind of my reasoning in having them. Look, not sure it's happening in my video there. No, um, you're good. Yeah, so I, knowing my uh, predilection towards weeded, I, I definitely have one of those at the top, but um, wanted to create that diversity and not have two weeded, one and two, certainly sure. not one, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, you do like your wheat. Yeah. Yeah, that 15, I, I really like that. I think it would be nice to have a weeded... Um, and this this actually, now that I'm tasting, almost has like kind of a nice like a peach note to it. Um, this is usually usually the weed that comes out a little sweeter, but this one has plenty of nice sweetness to it as well. It's not too oaky, it's not too dry, um, and it does offer. I mean, it's fifty four, fifty five point four percent, but it has I think more viscosity actually than the five one eight, um, which is kind of interesting. I actually wrote down on the palette for this one, Del Monte fruit cup. <laughs> oh, okay. Very nice. <laughs> it took me back to my, uh, my school days, lunchbox days. Lunchbox. It's funny. My, my parents would never buy those until I like got older and I bought one myself and I was like, Oh, okay. This is what I missed out for years on. <laughs> I love the nose on 1508. It was yeah, I wrote decadent. Just it, it, it had a decadent nose. Okay. <laughs> what else can you say? I like it. Well, I think, barring major objection, maybe we'll go for a, a touch of five one eight and a touch of fifteen oh eight. Um, I think those are pretty two. They're unique. They're different enough. Uh, I think both are super solid. I actually kind of like that. There's a pretty big dichotomy in the proof. Like very oh. different drinking experiences. I feel like. Um. Yeah. That's a pretty. I think that's a pretty good showing, and then we'll see. Uh, we'll see about getting some rye and some just pure wheat whiskey in here too. But how did uh, how did you guys enjoy the tasting experience? Did you guys do like all six at once? Did you do three and three? I'm kind of curious to see what people do because I I kind of like threw whiskey at you and I was like ah go taste um you know and we'll talk later and so I'm I'm kind of curious what your thoughts were. Yeah, I did uh, regrettably all six at once. Um, okay. <laughs> early last week i think i got them on what like tuesday or something so um yeah i went through the first time i went through all six at once and i at least had like a mental ranking of what i thought i liked the most and i retasted those um the next day just to make sure but um yeah the six at once i was uh i was fairly useless the rest of the evening <laughs> that's great yeah i also did six at once I actually, uh, I got a little bit jammed up schedule wise yesterday. So I <laughs> drove two hours from where we were for the weekend, came back home, had to taste and then run over to my, uh, my in-laws house for mother's day. So, oh man, had to, <laughs> had to fit it in there a little bit, definitely, but, uh, it worked out. So you were, you were like, you were rolling for mother's day that, that, I mean, six, six cast drink bourbon before any experience with in-laws seems like a pretty wise choice. But, <laughs> I was pretty relaxed by the time I got there. <laughs> yeah, there was no stress involved that I, I'm sure. Yeah. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, it, it's actually great too. I drove back from a wedding yesterday, so thankfully I did some tasting before. Um, I won't say I was hungover last night, but I definitely wasn't 100. Um, percent So I I finished up my rankings today because I was like, oh yeah, I'll just taste after the wedding. And I woke up after the wedding and was like, no, like <laughs> no more alcohol is going to enter my body. But cool. Well, guys, it's been great. This is a little off tempo for us, but it's always fun to weigh in. Um, both Tom and Andrew 
are on Reddit. Uh, Andrew is as AC Ducey. So you guys have definitely, how do you pronounce it? Is it AC Ducey? AC Ducey, yep. Okay. I was like, I'm so sure of it. But then people have been like, so sure of my username too. And I'm like, okay, well, nice try. But uh, yeah, so we went ahead, we selected cask number 518, barrel number 518, uh, six year weeded bourbon at 121.5 proof. And then straight bourbon whiskey, uh, 1508, which is a six year as well um, at 110.8 proof, which I'm pretty pleased with. Like the six year, I think, is drinking really nicely. Um, six years is a really great spot for MGP. I'm curious how long old elk will let some of these mature like i think some of these are like 10 or like 14 would be just absolutely killer whatever we ranked last will sit for a while i think so we can try it again in four years <laughs> we'll try 40, 14 48 in like a decade and be like oh okay a 16 year very old elk okay uh, that's funny I, I I like the year I like the year like you're steadfast you're vehement in the the dislike for fourteen forty eight that's uh I love it well uh cool guys go ahead and stick around we'll chat a little bit in the green room but for everyone that's watching at home this was another great selection this will retail through all the normal channels at our bourbon and uh, I think I think that's pretty much it catch the update on Friday when it goes out and hang around you too we'll uh, we'll kind of hang out but I'll roll the the outro and we'll uh. Kill it for the night. Let's see.